Hey Steve, working on your World War II engine today. Getting the rods resized right now. And we got the oil flowing. Rods are coming along. And I'll show you where I'm at on the last one here. Okay, I just cut the cap and the rod. And I've got one thousandth left to go. We'll get that honed perfectly round. And we know our oil clearance will be perfect when we're done. So, let me get going on that next. check. Got a few tenths more to go. We'll get these rods all to zero and just, just getting ready to get the pistons on. Send these in the block and then the block will basically be done. I still got to hang all the accessories on it for you Steve. Got to put the generator on. I got to get a carburetor. Um, probably going to rebuild the distributor for you so I know it's good. And uh, we'll just keep chipping away at this. And um, hopefully, very soon, you'll have this engine back in your Jeep and you can deliver that other one to the other guys. Okay, Steve, got all four rods done. There's the perfect finish. You could barely see the parting line there. Perfectly round, perfectly on size, and guaranteed perfect oil clearance. So, I'll get those cleaned up, I'll get the pistons on, and start assembling. Okay, let's go take a peek at some other engines that I'm working on. Give everybody an update, show you where they're at. Mark, sleeves are in. We'll get boring on that one. I've got a Hercules 6 out of a, I believe it's a Chris Craft boat. Uh, just got this one off the Blockmaster. I don't know if you can see in there, but there is a huge crack in number 6. So we're sleeving this block. Got the head on the Blockmaster, getting that ready to go. Okay, Brian, uh, block is decked. I, um, I took you down quite a bit here. I know you said you wanted to increase compression. Uh, I really uh, lowered the deck. I'm not quite at a zero deck. Uh, I don't want to go that far on it, but I am way down. Your compression is going to be much better on this engine. Uh, Larry, you are also decked. able to go just a little bit. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but your engine number is still in there. Uh, I did have to put a time cert in there. And uh, you are ready to start boring. I was going to start that today, maybe. And same thing with you, Brian. I get both of those guys bored. And uh, there is the crank for the Hercules. I get that going on. And right here I have Brian's crank. It was kind of a mess. I didn't know if I was going to have to grind it. I was able to polish it out. Uh, I still have to do some work on number four rod journal. Uh, I don't know how they missed so bad, but um, they, they missed on size on this real bad. I'm just going to touch that with the wheel. Um, it's a couple thousands too big. I, I, I don't understand how that happened on just that one. But uh, I got to get that down to size, and uh, otherwise it uh, it polished up very nice. So that'll go back in your engine, Brian, and not be a problem. But like I say, I do have to touch up number four rod. OK, 
Okay, here is another MB engine. This is one of those sneak attack engines. I didn't know it was coming in, but um, this one is a part. And here is the crank. And this one is going to clean up. Let me see what I figured on this one. I think I could take the mains to 30 and the rods to 20 on that one. Uh, here is another one out of that surprise F head that showed up. Same thing, I think I can clean it up at uh, uh, 30 on the mains, 20 on the rods. And let's go see what's out here. Uh, the F head is completely disassembled. This is a chain drive early CJ2A engine and I think you can see it's a disaster um, guys you gotta start checking the engines out before you send them um, I'm not gonna be able to save much I'm hoping I'm hoping to be able to save the block uh, I will get you another crank cover is worn through I can fix that I'm having a hell of a time getting the pulley off uh, so uh, pan is shot, that has holes in it, oil pickup is shot, that, that's completely fell apart. Uh, we can't get the pistons or the crank out just yet. And like I say, I am going to try and save this chain drive block for you, but uh, no guarantees on this one. Um, when they sit outside or underwater like this, you got to assess them before you, you send them in. It's just, uh, there's not much that's going to work out here. This is going to be a pricey uh, rebuild. Pile of parts in the back of my truck there and if it ever stops raining uh, we'll get back and sandblast those. Uh, I got a supersonic head there, got an MB head for this the MB engine. I got a uh, oil pan for Steve's engine. Uh, flywheels I want to knock the rust off before I resurface them. And a bunch of uh, F head stuff there. So, uh, just waiting on the rain to stop. It's been a super rainy summer and uh, can't seem to catch a day for sandblasting. But uh, cleaning stuff up as, I, uh, as the weather permits and as I have time. Okay, Steve, there's your pistons mounted to the rods, perfectly resized. Clean the oil squirt hole out. You've got the silver lights going in there, standard. And I've got all the bearings in there. It's easier to check the oil clearance here on the bench. So, number one, inch and a half, uh, not inch and a half, there I go crazy again. Uh, one and a half thousandths oil clearance. Number two, one and a half thousandths oil clearance. Number three, uh, one thousandths and four tenths, you know, uh, a little less than one and a half. And one thousandth and one tenth. So, um, well within the specs of um, uh, max is two thousandths, so we're well in the specs there. I just check them with a snap gauge and the micrometer. And we know our crank is uh, 40 under, 1897 and a half to 1898. And that's what gives us the little variation in bearing size. Clearance is the crank. These are all resized perfectly, so the crank is just a little bit off by half thou and, or, or two tenths or three tenths. Just depends. Uh, but. Uh, perfect oil clearance on these. Uh, I'm going to get the rings on for you and then pop these in the engine and put the head on and the engine will be fairly complete at that point. I just have to clean up that oil pan for you and work on getting the accessories on there and uh, you know painting it up and getting it in the test stand and firing it up for you but um, things are coming along so hang in there. Uh, more coming uh, in the future days. I'll show you the rest of it going together. Okay, we're over here on the crank machine again. We're going to finish up Brian's crank. 
Uh, I've got the number four journal on the rod uh, within a half a thou. I'm going to take a 400 grit belt with some rouge on it and polish that up and get it down to final size. And then once I do that, we'll, uh, we'll go over the numbers and I'll show you where his crank came in. Just a little bit more on there and we'll be at size. Got it there. I'm going to uh, show you the numbers we came in at on this one next. And uh, I think this crank's going to be perfect for you, Brian. So uh, hang in there. We'll be right back with you. Okay, Brian, here's how your crank came out. Uh, your mains, after all the polishing I did, uh, these are your factory specs here on the left. And you can see uh, they've been they've been cut 20, so you're well within specs there. Two, three, thirteen and a half on number one. Two, three, thirteen and one tenth on number two. Two, three, thirteen and four tenths on number three. So you're in perfect shape there. Uh, these are numbers that everybody should be aware of if you're uh, grinding these cranks. So your factory specs there. Your rods, I think you can see that. I hope you can see that all right. Your specs are 1937 and a half to 1983 and 3 tenths. Um, you came in perfect again, 20 under, uh, 918 and a tenth on 1 and 2, 918, 1918 and 3 tenths on number 3. Number four was a real booger there. That was, I don't know how it was so oversized. Um, that started out at 1920 and a half. I uh, had to take it down to 1918 and 1 tenth to be in factory specs. Uh, you did have quite a bit of scoring and damage on that number four rod. Uh, I don't know how the last uh, crank grinder could have got it so bad. But um, they really messed up on that one. But uh, no worries, you're, uh, you're back in good shape. Uh, your rear main uh, seal area, uh, I don't know if it's been polished or if they welded it last time. Uh, the factory spec is 2 inch 310. Uh, yours came in at 2 inch 307. Um, I think it's going to work out for us. I tried to seal on there. I don't think it's worth welding and grinding, but uh, I, I think it's going to be all right. So, uh, no worries on the rear main. And let me give you a look at the crank. And it's kind of hard to see with the glare. But everything is polished up very nice. Uh, this will be a good crank for you now. Um, number four 
had some heavy scoring. That's your your um, number three. I mean, your, your number three main. There's your number four rod that I fixed. Uh, number three main uh, had some heavy scoring as well, but um, you can't feel anything now. So that'll be a good journal as well. And we're getting there. Uh, crank is straightened out now, so I feel good about that. Uh, a little bit of boring and some valve work, and uh, we'll be on our way with your engine. Okay, guys, another day got away from me, but uh, got a lot done today. Uh, here is John's pinion completely set, rotational torque set. The seal is in, and it has been 24 hours with gear lube in there, and it is dry. And now we're ready to go on and continue with the rest of the rebuild. So, cover a lot of ground today. I uh, just want to bring everybody up to date on their projects. And uh, everybody, thanks for watching as always. And I will catch you on the next video.